up, everybody? Welcome to Give and Take, the show about hot takes and even hotter people. See, I know this hotter people because look, right here, we have Sam O'Byrne with us today. Sam O'Byrne, how are you, man? Thank you for coming on and hanging out with us and talking about uh, Flesh and Blood. I, I'm doing well. Thank you all so much for having me. I've been, I have been fans of all three of you for some time. I, I often say that in, in these in these moments where we t I talk about my fab beginnings, my first CC deck I ever built, one of two of them was was uh, was was right down here, uh, the Katsu oh, deck man. from TCG Docs TCG Talks channel. So I'm, You're I'm pumping mad. Dylan's I'm tires, man. You're pumping his tires. He's gonna <laughs> he's gonna run with that forever now. Dude, he just so, clipped that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He clipped it. Uh, Breezy, how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, man. I am. You know, it's, I feel like we just we're just here, and that's a good thing because I missed you guys. So you know. I'm doing. I'm still doing good. I like it, Dylan. Yeah. How are you feeling now that you know that you were an inspiration, an illumination to Sam? Sam's told me that several times, which is weird. And but it's funny. Uh, several people have told me that, like as they're kicking my butt. Like I remember Merritt Kemp one time was like, "Oh, you're the first creator I ever watched," and then he beat me in the Calling Dallas. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you're like, no, yeah, it's yeah. Where's your Where's your trajectory? Everyone else is. I'm just yeah, kidding. It's like, doing well, great. Yeah, join the game, especially Sam and just to gas him up like three floating like. I mean, you said you joined late, but your channel is arguably like if we had a breakout career of the year, it's definitely y'all. So y'all are doing ah. awesome. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, cheers. Yeah, 100%. Then... For those that don't know, Sam O'Byrne is uh, one of the members of Three Floating on YouTube. Go check it out. I linked it in the description. Uh, it is incredible stuff. Uh, they do a lot of really good stuff, but uh, not only they're only on their channel, but also with LSS, which is really, really cool. They have some great stuff. Uh, that they've sort of partnered with them on that. He's going to spill the beans on all of that. I didn't tell him that. No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't have to talk about any of that. No, but they've done some fantastic work with LSS. Uh, caster extraordinaire. He's one of the best casters, in my opinion. Uh, one of the best casters that exists in the flesh and blood space, period, end of story. Uh, and now At least on this stream. 100% uh, on this stream. Yeah. And now he's going to regale us with the hottest of takes here on Give and Take. Yeah. So for those that don't know, the way that this show works is it is a complete and total ripoff of Around the Horn. So uh, let's begin, and uh, we'll jump into our very first topic of the day. If I like their takes, I give them points. If I don't like their takes, I'll put them to negative one. I don't know what it is. I don't know what we'll do. We'll do, we'll do something. But the first topic for today we're going to talk about is this. We just wrapped up the Road to Nationals uh, sort of weeks. Four weeks of competition are in the books. We have results for those. I didn't put those results on the screen. I know there's been a lot of people, myself included, that have talked about it on videos and things like that. But I wanted to get all of your takes on where we ended in this Road to Nationals season. And uh, the first question that I have for everybody here, we'll go one at a time. Which hero do you think, in your opinion, made the biggest splash? Which one headlined the most? I'm going to kick things off with TCG Talk so that we can kind of get Sam's kind of feet wet in the whole process. So, Dylan, start us off. <laughs> so there's, a, there's an obvious answer to this. I'm going to go a little bit off uh, kilter here. I think Bolton, in my opinion, was the biggest splash hero. Like, obviously, there's another hero that had a lot of headlines, but Bolton like the last like four formats has been a hero everyone's like bolton's good now and you're like okay well where's the wins I, like it just never happens like um and seeing bolton be like right in the middle of the pack and above like actually some really like bigger heroes uh like having more wins like azalea dash Dorinthia, levia stuff like that um and even seeing bolton in our local area we had natalie who's a really talented player here got like triple luma like four rounds out of those eight of our rcn and just like absolutely destroyed so seeing bolton finally get his time to shine was really nice and i think bolton's actually a pretty good uh deck to go into for ptla so bolton was my splash hero bolton is not one i would have put on there but i i can see where you're going with it breezy what are your thoughts dude you know i gotta go with the low hanging points here and say kano <laughs> Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, there because I think, there we go. I, th I think, <laughs> yeah, see, go ahead, tap all right, y'all have fun. I'm gonna go ahead and tap out now. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I mean, there's this like the Kano comes and goes in waves, right? People are like, they forget about him far too often, and then this is just one of those seasons that with one, it's like, oh, yeah, Arcane is a thing because right off the heels of heavy hitters and you know, like bright lights, and you know, we just haven't had a lot of Arcane introduced in our life 
uh, this year and late last year. So we just haven't been thinking too much about it. The most is here with this uh, Dromize Burn the Malls. Kind of everyone's like, oh, I might have to bring that AB1. But you never think to bring in more than that, especially in the RTN season uh, when Kano can just come in and, and turn one, destroy your whole life. So I think it was unexpected. Obviously, like week after week two when he made that big splash, everyone was like, okay, kind of expect him at this point. You saw his numbers dip a little bit, but from week one to week two, it was just like, where did, okay, oh yeah, Kano, yeah, that's right, we got to bring the things, we have to do the things and watch out for him, so that'd be my pick. It's not a bad pick, and you are definitely playing to your audience here. The point getter, uh, the point total guy is a, is a Kano fan. All right, Sam, lay it on <laughs> us, what do you think? Biggest splash? Well, firstly, in, in in terms of you know playing to your audience, I do just want to say you know completely for no reason, I, you're, you're looking really great today, Stephen. Yep. You're looking yes, awesome. I, am. Yep. I think I think mm-hmm. the beard is just full and majestic. <laughs> the color looks great. And you bring out your eyes. Just showered, yeah. I know. Just just one. <laughs> he showered. I, I, I receive and I receive. I receive. At yep. the end of the day, I receive the shower. Um. Yep. Uh, but I I'm going I'm going third <laughs> in this question, so I feel like I can I can do some responding. I would like to first of all say I think Bolton is a very good answer. I think that's a great answer. I think in terms of the 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 decks that people necessarily weren't expecting came out did really well has a lot of good matchups people are talking about it a different way but i would hazard to say that if you look back to a, a more recent big tournament the realm games 20k realm rumble there was a bolton in the top eight of both the 20k and the 10k brawl you had yuki lee bender you had ellie bird coming in there with bolton i feel like that might have been when bolton made the splash you know like oh mm. Oh my gosh, Bolton in the top mm. eight of the 20K, Bolton in the top eight of the 10K, maybe this deck has some legs. And uh, in, in response over over to uh, all the left here, Parker, I, I would agree. I think you have to pick Kano, but I think you have to pick Kano for not just one reason, for two reasons. If you're talking about Splash in terms of discourse, oh my God, discourse with a capital D. The amount mm. of mm. talking about Kano that has happened on all the apps recently has been insane because of the amount of wins. No one expected that. People were literally like, Maybe they just misinputted KO. <laughs> yeah, that's K- true. I mean, if that doesn't tell you what a splash is, then I don't know what will. And then I think if we're also talking about looking ahead to the PT, people, everybody is talking about Kano as a real deck in PT in a way that just simply would not have happened without the results of backing up like, oh, wow, it can actually go and win all these tournaments. If, if that hadn't happened over RTN season, it would still be regarded as like, oh, yeah, Kano can always just show up and spike anything for sure. That is always possible. But everybody's talking about it now. Everybody is having to consider it because of the RTN season. So I, I would agree it is the low-hanging fruit, but I actually think it's like a, a, a double splash, if you will. Mm. I find okay, it okay. very fascinating that out of all three of you, no one actually mentioned the top two point getters. For the RTN season, no one talked about Dromai. No one talks. Yeah, right. No one talked about the the hero that took down more RTNs at all. And that is not, in anyone's here opinion, the the biggest splash of a hero. I wonder why. Let's go, uh, Sam. Tell me why not Dromai then? Is there a reason that you didn't go for her? Well, I think Droma is more more known quantity, more more known expectation of a, of a very strong deck that has a lot of has had a lot of success, kind of you know more recently. But also, it it's just so fundamentally powerful to have these permanents that are more challenging to interact with without the phantasm, um, you know, with the with with the phantasm having the ability to go away with the chrome eyes and the mirror guys and the passing mirages. Like, just decks have harder time playing into that in a way that like mm. Kano. And and Bolton, like those are just less expected quantities. Those are those. You talk about a splash, like I don't know. I think that there's a reason that we're all like looking at the decks that, that made more of a surprise. Even though sure. I do think the fact that Dromai won all of these events does change the narrative going into the Pro Tour quite quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, Breezy, what do you think? Why not Dromai in your opinion? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like not to piggyback too much on what sam's saying but it's kind of i mean she's she's fab one fab 1.0 still right so she still has a certain design element to her that was re thought <laughs> post dromai you know and and not to say that that's an auto win but we've seen what she can do all through you know last year and uh i mean for her to though the meta was extremely wide open there was she was the unspoken deck to beat like, no one was wanting to out loud say, but Dromai is the deck to beat because they wanted to fully believe that their hero could take it 
when really Dromai was still the sleeper agent that's like, I'm still here doing the same dro dragon stuff that you have to mm -hmm. deal with. Yes, some heroes broke out and we got some points. And there are arguably some better matchups with some tools that have come out lately, but um, also, of course, with KO uh, and, right. and Victor. But yeah, Dromai is one of those ones that's just like, if you said Dromai had the top winning RTN wins, I, wouldn't, I don't know how many people would be like, oh! I think that's pretty much a, a, a dead giveaway. That was almost going to guaranteed happen. Hmm. TCG Talk, what are your opinions on that? Yeah, I don't. So Dromai on a lot of people's lists, including my own, a lot of people were saying that she wasn't going to be good like prior to RTN season. Like most people had her around like C tier, like maybe low B. I think people just weren't expecting her to just continue to push through like the popper meta. The reason she's not a splash for me is because like there's certain heroes that are comfort picks for the top players. Like they'll just play them. Um, and Jeremiah is one of those. Like Brav is another one where it's like in, in lieu of not knowing what to play, the top players just play those, right? So you're expecting that hero regardless of representation to do well. And Jeremiah was one of those where a lot of the top players just kind of like went to that hero. Um, and the other one was actually, I think, Guardian and Victor specifically. So that's why she wasn't a splash for me. And you'd expect her to be good. Like, like Parker said, like she's her and Phi are the last two of the, like, they truly are the last two of like uh, the more tuned um, heroes. Mm -hmm. So it, you expect them, even though Phi didn't do as well, you expect them to do better in most metas. Right. Yeah, I kind of followed that. And I, I would actually say, as a as an avid Dromai player myself, that it was pretty well established that people thought she would be worse into this meta simply because there were going to be more poppers available, more brutes running around, more guardians. And so to me, she was a pretty big breakout success when, you know, everyone's essentially thinking at the beginning of the RTN season that she's just going to get pushed out by so many poppers. Now, of course, I've played enough Dromai to know that that's not the only thing that settles that matchup, and good players don't necessarily worry the same way about poppers that, um, you know, yeah. non-Dromai non players perhaps think they do. Uh, that being said, though, when there's a critical mass of certain heroes or classes that really hate on you, you can certainly get pushed down. But it turns out that's not uh, Guardian, and that's not Brute for Dromai. Uh, it's probably more Ninja than anything else, and she showed up and showed out this uh, RTN season. Sam, you're raising your hand like you're <laughs> I don't, in class. I will teach uh, I don't next wanna... week. <laughs> Oh, I don't want amazing. you don't have to give me points. I don't I'm not I'm not trying to take an extra time to speak. I just want to agree with everyone because I think I, I think theoretically people were like Dromai is not very good. But then when you actually talk to people about the decks they were bringing, a lot of people said, well, I just don't really want to see Dromai in Swiss, yep. you know, and so I think that yeah, that it speaks more to what a deck's power level actually is than what people theoretically think is the case. 100%. You know? It's the same thing with Kano that's being said constantly. Because again, mm -hmm. people look at that as a polarizing hero and they say, the deck is bad, but it's also not bad because it wins when you don't do anything to stop it. But that's the that's the really interesting thing we'll talk more about when we go into our next topic. Nevertheless, I do want to do, I want to ask this question uh, before we move on to that topic. And that's this. If we now have established what you think your biggest splash is what do you think is the hero in your opinion that is the biggest dud of the rt in season that you think players that uh you know or maybe uh you know personalities that were predicting this hero to do well and it didn't do well should look back at and go uh oh what's the what's the uh rub there and i'm gonna start with breezy what do you think is the biggest dud in your opinion oh, oh. well I, I had a dud until you said people are people expected it to happen hmm. honestly we've had like i don't know necessarily that it was pre-rtn that people expected it but you know um all the devs sat together and like almost every single one of them named teclo Vossen, and, and like he was nowhere to be seen hmm. right so like where's teclo because apparently they see something where he has legs into a wide open meta and i'm just we're just waiting to see how he walks with said invisible legs because right now it's like I know there's a couple, again, this is like a specialist meta. This is the era of the specialists. And I know there's some really great players uh, with Tech Lovos. And if you can get Singularity out, like GG's. Um, but if you can't, it's also GG's. So I think that's like kind of the one the one hero. I mean, even Dash IO and Max, honestly, just bright, bright Lights in general. <laughs> I'm mm. going to lump it into say Bright Lights in general is kind of just go, coming out of that set those heroes were had the spotlight on them and then immediately it's like they were they were the 
Andy's toy of flesh and blood, <laughs> like instantly. And she's like, I don't care about these heroes anymore. So yeah. yeah, but specifically, I guess I could say Teclo. That's not a bad answer, actually. I was, uh, I, I wasn't expecting much though. I will say, um, right before RTN season started, there was an AGE open that Sam, were you casting that AGE open where, uh, oh, yeah. Teclo crushed Kasai? Dude, that was a talk about a uh, talk about a just come out of nowhere story that definitely set the stage for there possibly to be some fireworks. And it never quite came to fruition, unfortunately, with Tech Lavosin in this RTN season. Uh, but let me go over to you, Sam. Sam, take it away. Tell us what you think. Sure. What's your hottest take for the dud of this uh, RTN season? Oh, man, I mean, maybe the hot maybe the hottest take is Bravo just because of how well Victor did. You know, and you expect if Victor's going to do really well, then how, why wouldn't Bravo do a little better? But I actually wasn't giving my answer. But you said hottest take. I think my actual answer is when you look at how well the Brutes did in general, and you look at where Reinar was right on the precipice of coming into heavy hitters, how much support Brute got, and like, dude, where where were Reinar's wins? Where where were Reinar's dominance? I mean, we think there's some there's some whispers of a, of, of a new Reinar that's doing pretty well in the Dromai, a little more combo oriented. That maybe we're gonna see break out at the PT. But when you look at the RTN season, like, there's a lot of agility support that Reinar got, like these other brutes. Ko and Leviah just ran away with a bunch of RTNs. Like, where where was Reinar? I. You know what? That is uh, that's words right out of my mouth because that was the pick that I had for uh, for this exact topic. But Dylan, lay it on us. What is your opinion on the uh, the biggest miss this time around? So yeah, one to add the Sam's point before I answer that. Reinar list is annoying. The beatdown list with like nine Brogenes <laughs> and it just kills you. It's basically a mini Berserk list. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, and to comment on the Reinar thing, this is not shade at Reinar players. I'm just observing. I think the re reason Reinar struggles a lot outside of the top, top echelon of players is because players aren't patient enough with that hero. They want to play Reinar like a brute, like just they always take chances they shouldn't take. Because every time you see a Reinar top, if you watch their deck tech video, they're very patient. They know like, I don't roll scabs unless I don't have a freaking choice. Or like they just approach the hero differently, every single one of them. So I think it's, I think it's a way people play Reinar that holds it back more than the hero itself. But that's a side point. Um, this is a hero that people didn't expect to do as well as the other two they mentioned, but I still think it's better than people think, and I'm not sure why, and people are going to disagree with me, but Fi. I crap on Fi all the time because I'm a Katsu player, and everybody knows that. But if you think about Fi and what like what has changed in the meta since Worlds, where Fi won the World Championship, Icelander left. That should make Fi better, right? Instantly. You got Victor. Yes, Victor is terrible for Fi. It is awful. But if you avoid Victor, like what really changed, right? Like Bravo is still Bravo. And you talk to a five player and they say it's favored. You talk to a Bravo player and they say it's favored. Like it's one of those like favored, favored matchups. He does well and really well in the Jeremai. Like he can race brutes. Like it's very interesting to see. I don't think Fi is good in the meta, but I, I expected Fi to get more than five wins. Um, because if you can avoid Victor, which early in the season was a little bit harder. I think I just think Fi should have done better. And I think a lot of Fi's saw the early tier list and got down on the hero when they didn't need to. And I think the hero is, again, just like last big a tournament, it's a hero everybody was down on going into the tournament, and then you just see them randomly at a top eight. Like, I could mm -hmm. easily see that happening, especially with so much Jeremiah and KO going into this PT. I think Fi and Katsu both, like, Truly no bias are like two heroes that you could see do really well just because they're positioned really well late in this season. Yeah. The, the way that I look at this, uh, leaving RT in season, to me, those two heroes, Fai and Katsu, are my biggest question marks going into PT because I feel as though that Kano has already been well tread. People are either going to prepare for Kano. Uh, by both practicing the matchup, learning how he functions, and then also putting in the necessary sideboard pieces, or they're going to try and dodge it and, and devote those slots elsewhere. So to me, that's almost a known quantity now. Now my question becomes, how many people are going to play Ninja of any form or facet? Because I think Katsu is in a really good position to uh, kind of go down and, and like do some stuff particularly with if, if you look at the RT and wins that he had, he's up there at the, the towards the top of the leaderboard. And his matchup spread does not look bad 
when you're when you're sitting down to look at like everyone he's playing. I played uh, an RTN and I had unfortunately had to play into Akatsu as aggro Dromai and it's like you can win that matchup from the Dromai side, but God, you don't enjoy playing any single bit of it because it's just it's mm. terrifying from start to finish. And for me, I very much want to know where the uh, ninjas are going to fall. Sam, you look like you were holding back with everything you had <laughs> when uh, when Dylan was talking. Did you have something you wanted to add in? Why? Well, I just think you and you look at a split format tournament versus CC only tournaments, heroes do very differently, right? Because as much as can be said about how incredible Phi was at the World Championship, I think we really got to talk about how incredible Alex was at the World Championship because yeah. not only yep. did Phi sneak in and take down that thing, but like like you were talking about Dylan, like Phi is a hero that if if he gets in the right position can just kind of beat anybody if he just goes crazy enough for the most part, but you also have to win your draft rounds, right? Where so it's it's different when you have, you know, eight rounds of CC in a row versus a multi-day split format tournament where you're testing these players on very different things than just is your CC hero that you picked gonna gem into your best matchup enough that you make mm. it to the top eight you know what i mean mm. that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah it certainly has um, a lot of bearing into how these uh tournaments these major tournaments play out because uh heavy hitters is part of this uh draft format and in this uh split format which actually segues nicely into our second topic because uh the pro tour is on the way we're only what a week and a half away from uh, everyone kind of going out and getting ready and getting hyped one week. or uh, yeah maybe it's less actually i guess it would be one week from today right holy crap <laughs> oh, time yeah. flies when you're having uh, fun playing flesh and blood but it is primed to be a fantastic time we've got an incredibly open meta that was just proven by rtn season we have uh, perhaps one of the best sets of all time ever released uh, in the game in heavy hitters and clearly one of the best uh, draft and sealed sets ever created in the game. And you combine both of those to create this experience that we're about to enter into either by going there and experiencing it ourselves or watching the fantastic coverage. Either way, my question is, will this be, in your opinion, Sam O'Byrne, the best pro tour ever you can take yes. that however you want <laughs> yes i do i think i think you have gotten to a place in this game you look at the first pro tour it's the first one it's so exciting everybody's so thrilled to be there and there are still some things that you, you you'd maybe want back right you'd maybe want starvo back right you, you, you'd maybe wish there wasn't the same uh, uh <laughs> worldwide pandemic so everybody has to wear masks and it's not the same feeling of openness right there, there's some things you might want back you look at pro tour 2 what an incredible time you might want lexi's dominance a little back just in terms of homogeneity of cc representation right you might you, you might want some things about the way that turned you might want some of those things back even though it was such an incredible time you look at la you have a location that everybody's really excited about beautiful city a lot of fun things to do a lot of accommodations a lot of you know ways to get around you look at the meta which is so wide open so exciting for both a viewer and for a player and then you look at just the state the game is in this should just is everything is kind of the stars are coming together to make not only potentially the best event never but also the biggest all right breezy you gotta you gotta go toe to toe with that what do you think <clears throat> Uh, is Joshua Scott in chat? Because if that's Joshua Scott, Joshua Scott, what up? Yeah, he um, tied his shoes double knotted recently. <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. I I, I've heard, I've heard. For him. I've heard, yes. I was rooting for him. Also, yes, he says best pro tour so far. But is you know what? Is going to get better and better? It you could, could, it could get better and better. Points. Or this could top out. This could be the best <laughs> that there is, period, end of story. That's for them to decide. Go ahead, Breezy. Lay it on us. So, yeah, I mean, uh, this is the first pro tour where we don't have per se a like gate kept triangle of doom at the top of the meta there are if and dylan has mentioned this and he, like this is something that i feel like i've literally only ever heard him say where it's like if you told me you were bringing x hero into pro tour i wouldn't even be like <laughs> that's funny like you, i'd be like okay mm -hmm. yeah best luck, dude like i think you got this like there's literally no wrong answer to the pro tour as long as, like I said earlier, this is the specialist's time to shine. And if you totally. feel so inclined to be 
that Arachne player at Pro Tour, I don't think that's like a goofball move. I think that if you, you sit might down have... across from Arachne at Pro Tour, <laughs> I'd be scared as heck because that yeah, dude knows they're <laughs> exactly. good. Like they're exactly. like, okay, they didn't bring this on a whim. They brought this because they think they can win. Like exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like no, dude. The 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 side events are over there, dude. He's like, oh no, yeah. I'm playing pro tour, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's like we in previous pro tours you couldn't say that. So that's number one. But what does that do for the game as a whole? Like, if if I'm a specialist, I feel so welcome at such a high up echelon event, right? Like I, I don't feel like I'm going to be made fun of. I don't think there's a lot of that, thankfully, in this game yet. Uh, but I don't, I don't feel like there's going to be people like, you know, whispering about my deck in the corner. So I feel welcome at this event, regardless of who, what year I'm playing. Oh, you're not playing Dromai? Oh, see you, see you at the bar tonight. You know, you <laughs> have, you can drink all night not knowing you have to play it night, next day. Have fun so, in the yeah, calling think... tomorrow. That's what they'd say, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it. so you're going to play? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think that that just does, it like double downs on like enjoyability, camaraderie, and like it's anyone's game. And that's never, that's never been said, at I least wholeheartedly in past Pro Tours. Dylan, what's your hot take on this? Is this the best one? I say no, but only because I'm really biased to the first Pro Tour. Um, the first Pro Tour, Pablo Ventura, literally came out of nowhere, started 2 and then won 11 rounds straight to get into top eight. I'm going from a narrative standpoint here. Um, I'll that take is a really ways. good I'll... narrative, actually. You're very so, correct. So, like, Pablo... I remember because I remember that Pro Tour and they had like the cool graphics of like how many ELO do they have? And Pablo literally was like just started the game. <laughs> like <laughs> they showed like Michael or whoever it was. They showed like several people that had like top 100 in their country and all this sort of stuff. And Pablo was like 60 ELO, 60 XP. Um, and <laughs> it was. And, and he ended up getting back there. And if people remember that Pro Tour had two Kanos in the top eight, um, both, out, both with Vore Brothers. So like yeah. from a narrative standpoint, I hope it does. Like, I hope I'm wrong, but I would love to see a pro tour top that it's going to be very hard. I think, and this is not to be negative. This is meant to be a positive thing. I, if any, if even two players are watching this, like it's going to be on the players of if, if this is the best pro tour ever, if people come out saying like, this is really cool. There's a ton of different heroes being played. There, it's just awesome wide open meta. And that's the narrative set by the players. Then it will be perceived as one of the best pro tours ever. Mm. If players come well back said. jaded saying it's gen, gym roulette and it's all this other stuff that we, I don't even want to get into, then it may not be viewed as the best pro tour ever. It should be, but it's really on the, competitive players because a lot not a lot I, I hate using offensive some of the competitive players are using the gym roulette narrative and i hate that spin it use it as oh anybody can play whatever they want it's a specialist meta play what you want do the best you can and have fun with it and honestly if i can say one thing i think pro tour this is the first pro tour people can be like all right i'm gonna take my comfort pick whatever i think i'm best on and i'm just gonna go kill draft like I was talking to our locals the other day. If, if I was going Good to Pro point. Tour, which I'm not, I would have locked in a month ago. I would have said, I'm picking Katsu. If I lose, I lose. I'm going to be the best possible player at draft. And I'm just going to go 50 50, hope I don't get matched into a victor, and I'm going to ace my drafts. Um, and prior Pro Tours, you had to like balance this Pro Tour. You could be like, I'm just going to play what I'm good at, and then I'm going to do well at draft. Um, so I think there's also a merit in that of like, it might even be just even more skilled because now you can really put that emphasis on draft of like, okay, are you a good drafter? Um, as well as good at your specialist. So, it's a really good point. question for the room. Question for the room. Question for the room. U.S. Nats. U.S. Nats. What was the what was the thing that happened to U.S. Nats that that no one expected? What the fatigue Briar picking it up? Fatigue yeah, Briar out of yeah. nowhere, right? Yeah. Out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So you look at Pro Tour meta. You look at a wide open meta. What I'm waiting for and what I'm excited to see. Which Dude. group of players? Which individual player? Who brought the deck? that people are not ready for, that everybody's mm -hmm. ready for the known quantities of RTNC. Who brought the thing that people are going to be like, what am I playing against? You're running what equipment? What hero is this? You know, I have some ideas of what, what those things might be, but I, you know, I, I know that I don't know what it's actually going to be, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, I know yeah. for, for <laughs> damn sure it's something I haven't thought of yet because there are some way better players out there that are just in the lab. And I think that, you talk about the Kano in the first Pro Tour, that was that was kind of that deck in Pro Tour. Aether Wildfire yeah. hadn't been a thing yet, right? Mm -hmm, so, like, mm -hmm. what is the thing that isn't a thing yet that's going to come into this open meta and just... That's what I'm excited. For. It's it's Bravo. <laughs> it's Bravo. We can just say that right now. Everyone I, knows I, it's Bravo, it's, right? No, I'm Star just Bravo. kidding. <laughs> it's probably not Bravo. Spoiler alert. It's probably he does the same thing he's always done. Hey, uh, okay. So here's the follow up to this, okay? Because if you missed it, LSS put out a really fun video where they got developers together for the game, 
and Brian Gottlieb asked them a bunch of questions, and they just talked. And one of the questions that they asked was, give us your top eight for the Pro Tour. Well, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to ask you all to give me what hero wins the entire tournament. Now, again, this is a split format tournament, so it don't you know don't take it for it meaning that that's the best hero in the game. But Dylan, you get to start us off. Pick a hero. Hot takes. Lay it on us. What hero wins the pro tour? Reinar. Um, oh my Reinar's god. So for two reasons. That's fire a take, man. That's that a fire more, take. Well, one is a reason that makes more sense, and one is kind of like my own thing. I think Reiner's the best counter pick in the meta right now. Um, there's not a lot of them, and I think like if you look at the top of the meta, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Ko Guardian, like that's typically what it is. And I think this is another personal thing. I think if you take a side to this pro tour, it's a death sentence. Um, I would not take her to the pro tour because she has two near auto losses at the top of the format. So like, there's not. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of warrior representation. And when I say a lot, I mean like as much as we've seen in RTN season. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of Jeremiah and there's gonna be a lot of Guardian because that's everyone's comfort picks, right? In a split format, you take what you know you're good at, and then you hope you ace everything else. And I think Reiner has a lot of good play into that. I think that beat down deck that Sam mentioned is real. That thing sucks. I got killed by, at 22 life on Arachnia Day by that thing. Um, it's terrible. So that's one reason. The other reason I say Reinar is in a split format, I value specialist players because they've been on that deck for the last six months. They locked it in three months ago. So guess what they haven't been doing a month and a half leading up Pro Tour? Switching between eight decks with their team, trying to figure out what they're playing. No, they're just drafting. They're just they're just playing games like they're not not sitting you know this week saying okay I got two decks what do I do no they locked Reinar sev seven weeks ago so like they've just been able to focus on draft focus on how they play their matchups which I think in a split format helps a lot um, so Reinar is my main pick and then just any highly specialist player I think is going to be very successful in this pro tour because they didn't have to worry about the last four weeks they're just focusing on draft mm, I like it breezy follow up to that what are your thoughts. Dude, I've been saying this for a while, but I think it's Levaya. I think it's Levaya, dude. I thought you were going to say this right. No, it's not going to be this right. <laughs> I've been saying this for a while in my dungeon. I don't get any sunlight. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, uh, this, is, this is probably the dumbest take, therefore probably the hottest take. But it was also because you segued us from uh, the devs' kind of hot take top eight prediction. And I'm pretty sure Levaya was in a couple of their top eights. And so I think that that, like, I mean, we keep saying this, it's like a, like a broken record, but the specialist heroes just become rewarded like so heavily. And people that are, it's like, there's like Arachne specialists, Levaya specialists. And like, there's a smaller group of specialists that's like the Riptide specialists. Like if they're locking <laughs> it in, they're locking it in, dude. Like there's a, that's a different kind of specialist. So if you show up to Pro Tour, your acing draft like you know what you know how to play the set they have a they have that side of of being able to draft really well because you know they understand the brutes if they get cornered into brute but they also know how to swing big hammer and do guardian things uh and i think that there's a good i think sam brought up like the the strategy of like there's a deck out there that no one really knows i think the the one that's going to find it is going to be a Leviathan player, and they're going to they're going to know. I mean, we've seen the no blood debt Leviathan. We've seen you've got redeemed as an option. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you could run into this, and it, it, it's no longer oh Leviathan. She just kills herself. You know, GGs. There's a lot of a lot of leg with that hero, and I think hmm. she's going to be interesting. Yeah, I guess if there's a one of the, perhaps one of the more underexplored heroes by the the wide swath of players. But maybe, mm. uh, maybe undeserving. What do you think, Sam? Well, firstly, shout out Arsenal Pass in the chat. We we, we see you. We have <laughs> to. Hayden, out, yeah, Hayden, Hayden Dale, Dale love. Yeah, Hayden Dale seeing is seeing the love. So <laughs> hype right now. <laughs> seeing the love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, brutes, brutes mentioned. <laughs> I I all right. So I'm bummed because I I'm all right. All right, all right I'm gonna stop Less catching this. Picks, I'm gonna right. give you. I'm gonna give you an alternate reality. You know, and you're going to be like, why, Sam? And I'll tell you in just a second. In an alternate reality, I'm not only going to give you the, the hero, but I'm going to give you the person that wins the Pro Tour, right? But unfortunately, it. It, it, but unfortunately, it cannot come to pass because that person is Ethan Mansant Van Oh, come on. You because, know it, right? Because Dude. Dude. I 
two ha- ha- thought Leviah was it was 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 maybe the pick, but Ethan is quietly one of the best limited players in this game, in this country, mm-hmm. and in this game. Like he, he, I mean, I would say he's quiet about it. He's not that quiet about it. He, he'll let you know. <laughs> he'll let you know that he's one of the best limited players in the game. He'll tell you exactly how the picks broke down. He'll tell you exactly how he drafted the deck that won the whole damn thing. But when you look back at the last Pro Tour, he bubbled out a top eight on Reinar. He's not a Reinar player, but he bubbled out a top eight because there were a lot of guardians. There were in some 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 you know matchups that uh, other decks were keeping out of the format. You know, I don't think Levi is super stoked to see a deck like Kasai, but Kasai's probably not doing very well. But you look at the Illusionists, you look at the Guardians. Levi has got a lot of game into them, and I think Ethan quite literally could have come into this tournament and taken the whole damn thing down. But he is streaming it, so everybody out there is very oh, lucky. But no I <laughs> it, now because of that alternate reality, the other one I'll give you, and this is in a, another kind of throwback from earlier in the thing. I think Bolton, man. I think you put Bolton, one of the only decks that can do two different things, both very well right now, and can attack matchups two different ways. One of them, that Sabers combo. If you again, kind of like Kano, if you don't have a way to stop it, you're just dead. You the just deck kills you. Yeah. You just die. It has access to Spell Void. If you're running a lot of attacks, that that Hero Power plus Antari Saver Hot Streak is no joke in those decks. And again, it's going to come down to the draft rounds. It's going to come down to some rogue decks. But I don't think you can count out. I mean, I don't think you can count out Ethan, but I think let's throw Bolton up there. It's so hard for me to to root for Bolton, though, because it's just going to get eaten by dragons. That's the problem, is that you look at the meta call and it doesn't I'll call that look to a Bolton good. Player. It doesn't look good. Yeah, well, don't, don't I mean, Roger now that defy that, its world championship. Right? I would, That's the same thing. You would think so. You would think so. I would love to see uh, Bolton finally put like a W up there, right? Something that to actually hang their hat on. But it's so much harder for me to buy that with this amount of Dromai. Like to me, Dromai has always been the uh, sort of the undercurrent deck. It's the deck that people gravitate towards because dragons, because pretty lady and dragon mommy and cool mechanics. And it's it's Magic the Gathering-esque because I get to build a board state. But it's never quite cut up. Yes, at Pro Tour 3, we had two Dromai in the top eight. They not, Neither of them converted because Oldham was a thing and Michael Fang is just too good, right? But... It's never gone that extra step, and now I feel like is the time for that deck to say, this is this is my time, I'm staking my claim, and I think people are jumping on for that reason. And so I'm I'm hesitant to say anything that has a bad matchup into Dromai is going to do okay. Same reason well, for but- Kasai, right? I, 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 wait, there are all these Dromai's. How many of them you think are like gas at the mirror? That's my question. Cause that mirror is no, no joke. And if there are a bunch of new Dromai players that think it's really good and think it's the top of the deck, like how many of those players are like put, have put the requisite hours into the mirror? Cause that's going to happen then. If there are a bunch yep. of Dromai's, they're, yep. they're going to all queue into each other. How many of them are like, oh, hell yeah, I'm ready. You know, <laughs> that's Probably always, not that, that many. That, that's always the counter question. Like it's the same, the same reason that people look at like a, you know, a Victor or a, a KO and they're like, why didn't they have the most points? Well, they probably ate each other in the mirrors and they yeah. cut their numbers yeah. in half, but it doesn't change the fact that a Dromai is going to sit down to a Bolton and have a plus matchup before they even draw cards. And so that's the worrying point for me, but I like, the fire and enthusiasm and i'm gonna i'm so pumped up that i'm actually gonna call an audible and change the uh the third question and just put you all on the spot and here it is okay we just said which hero is going to win the pro tour but like you mentioned everyone this is a split format tournament so my question is this which hero in the limited format of heavy hitters is going to be the most drafted and therefore or you can you can do and or is going to perform the best in limited because this is a limited set that many have touted as the best ever and uh i want to know if you think it's going to be split down the middle or if you think there's going to be someone that uh you know the the players at large force or if you think it's just read the room i want to know from you let's go uh I, i'm putting you on the spot and Sam, this is your time to be on the spot, sir. Ready. Fire I'm away. Ready. I have I, I have an answer for you. I have an answer for you. Top tables, the players in the top eight at the end of the tournament, when we look at their draft decks, we're going to see a lot of Kasai. That's what we're going to see. But I think if you look at the whole tournament, and I think if you look at which hero necessarily did the best in all the limited rounds, including the people that are playing for ELO, playing for fun, playing into day two when they have no chance at the top eight, it's going to be KO. That's what I think. 
I think when you're looking at the people who are really battling for the top eight of the Pro Tour, a lot of them are going to end up as one of two. They're going to end up somehow as one of one or one of two warriors, and they're going to draft a really good Kasai deck, and they're going to have access to attack reactions that no other hero gets to play with, and they're going to win a bunch of games, and they're going to push themselves in a really good place to make top eight. But KO's consistency and KO's high floor will carry him as the, the hero throughout the entire tournament when you look all the way from the top to the bottom of the leaderboards. There you go. Dylan, That's what are your uh, what are your thoughts, sir? Yeah, I want to be I want to be spice bits Kasai. I think Kasai is very very much uh ahead of the rest of the heroes in the format. Not like Phi level back in that format, but like it's it's a hero that doesn't punish you for staying open longer. Like you can it's very and then if you don't get the yellows you need, you can pivot to Olympia. It's just like that warrior in general in this limited format, I feel like is a little bit easier. Because Reinar, I mean, Reinar is already not that great, but you have to like have a certain amount of sixes. Even KO, you have to have a certain amount of draw discard. Like, whereas Warrior, like you can just get good Warrior cards and good dual class cards, and you can play into both a lot easier. Um, so it it doesn't punish you as much for staying open, which is I think a lot of people are realizing in this format you have to either that or you just go straight hard right away. Mm. So yeah, I think a size definitely first for me, and it's pretty like far disparaging. Breezy, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, Reinar. No, it's definitely Kasai. <laughs> it's, it's 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 always it, no, don't do that, Sam. It's Kasai. It's Kasai. Don't. There's somebody beside about Reinar. We will. We will talk about for that. sure. <laughs> that, for sure. I guess. Okay. So for sure, Kasai. I agree. I like your perspective, Sam, and saying like top tables, it's gonna be Kasai because because of her consistency, her her ability to push out damage. Like I've seen games close out when people are like, ah, I'm at nine. I just won't block here. Game over. Attack reaction's done. Like, it's, it's just game over. Um, so, yeah, I think for as far as consistency and just threat level, but, um, yeah, I mean, Reinar, if I was if I was forced into Brute, I would probably go Reinar because I just don't... I, 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 as much as I love KO's ceiling, I don't love his, like, go big or go home, especially when those stakes are that high. So I would probably mm. put Reinar, if people are drafting appropriately or smart or more intelligently maybe safely is maybe the better word if you're drafting safely because you can't you just can't get kasai you're probably going to go reinar and say look I, I have access to block i can i can i can go a little slower if i need an ag agility i can get it uh or you know you can build a, a defensive heavy deck if you need to but yeah 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 so I, it's just a kasai there's no there's nothing different it's just that's the answer there's no there's no that is the right answer. It's a spicy take, though, to think, uh, you know, and draft the uh, possible pivot point uh, between those two brute heroes could maybe be the uh, pivot over to over to the the original green man in Reinar. And, you know, maybe that's the case. Maybe that's what we see at the top tables. And, you know, I don't think you're too terribly far off. Clearly, Sam over here is not in his head. Like, he's like, super excited he's for it. <laughs> but I, I think it's super cool that we're having both a super open uh, classic constructed format combined with what many have called the best set of all time. And it's not the only set that we're going to be talking about at Pro Tour LA, because as our lightning round, we're talking about what uh, James White said was his masterpiece, the best set he's ever created. And that's part the mist veil. So here's the lightning round. Look, you're going to have, I don't know, I'm going to count in my head, 30 seconds. You're going to give me 30 seconds and you're going to tell me if, if he thinks, if uh, James White himself thinks that this is the masterpiece set, you need to tell me what, in your opinion, is the masterpiece set in flesh and blood up to this point. Okay. That is the question that you must fire at me and I'm firing it over at Breezy first. So until this point, you get to pick apparently after this, it's going to be part the miss fail, but what is your take? Uh, I just want to point out as much as I love James, he says this sets the best set ever <laughs> about every set. And I mean, that one was, I would too. To it's like Green saying, Ninjas it's, like, Parker. it's like telling <laughs> it's like, to, it's like asking which kid you love more, right? Like he's never going to be like, I mean, he, he'll admit his mistakes of be like, yeah, this didn't hit the mark or whatever. Uh, but you know, he's going to say this about everything. So, and, and kudos. I don't know. I don't, I don't think he says it about everything. I think he has, I think he says, uh, different things about different sets, but, uh, I don't think he's ever said, this is my masterpiece. 
Okay, maybe not masterpiece, but I Sam is dead. Look at him; he's there, literally dying on the floor. Dude. But no, Breezy's know, gonna lay it on us now before I, he stalls for more seconds. Otherwise, he's gonna run out of time. I, no, I already know. No, 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 I already know. It's Arcane Rising. Arcane Rising is the best set draft and uh, best draft for, set. Oh no! Sorry, sorry. Best limited <laughs> set. I don't like to what? draft it. <laughs> I would prefer. I would prefer. Fuck yeah! I'd prefer sealed. Yo, yeah, dude. There's okay. some top deck. You're I mean, I enjoy it. Deck. I enjoy it. You're going. You're going top deck. You're going arcane. You're going mixed split damage. Okay. You have so much flavor, dude. I'm telling. I'm telling you. <laughs> Maybe, so much fire. Hell, we had to tie oh that deck. Oh my god, bro. this is. Where's the deck? That was so spicy. You almost broke my mic stand just now. I'm just okay. Telling you, I, I, and that's the thing. It, it takes some time. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta go limited with it. Not a lot of people have. Okay, arcane rising is the pick. Uh, TCG talk. It's yours. That's the pick. I played two rounds of Arcane Rising back when I lived in North Carolina with some buddies of Limited. I've never met, I've never had a more hosh posh, unfunctionable <laughs> deck in my life from Ex that set. That <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> like, I have my hands, I'm like, I can't play anything. It felt like we were playing like Shape Shifter, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, no, dude, you don't like Scour the, the Battlescape? No, you're not the only one though. Like several people. That was WTR, man. Sca you can't. Except you can't say. Sorry, oh, sorry. No, no. Uh, uh, the uh, the other one. The other one that's similar. Arc the other one. So bad. Yeah, so the other bad. one is zero but, for three. Look at the top deck. But to Parker's like defense a little bit, even though I hate Arcane Rising Limited. Several people, like actually a lot of people, said Arcane Rising on the Flesh and Blood post, which I was like. Well, okay. Anyway, I'll get to my answer. Mine is Outsiders. It's by far Outsiders. It's not close. Um, everything that set did from top to bottom was almost perfect. Like the market, that is the best marketing Flesh and Blood LSS has ever done on a set ever prior to the set. The the pacing, the way they released the heroes, how they made the the sense of feel of the set and like got people like sucked in before the set even came out. Um, all the thematics of the heroes themselves. Yes, limited was a little bit grindy um, for fatigue, but it was fatigue by damage. It wasn't fatigue by blocks. Um, it that said to me was just it's amazing set to introduce people to the game. In my opinion, there are some slightly mixed mechanics, but like it's a really it's a set that makes sense. Um, yeah, I I thought Outsiders was I joined in Monarchs. I didn't get to experience like that initial Welcome to Wraith feeling. Um, so you know that I only can go from that lens. But for me, it's outsiders. See, that's the problem. Fatigue by know. damage in in that <laughs> set. I don't know. I think it was fatigue by fatigue in that fatigue. set. Fatigue. I'm just saying, <laughs> man. Just fatigue walk, by damage walk, exists in this set in heavy hitters. Okay, Sam, you've had all this time to craft your answer. What is your take on the best setup until this point? All right. There's a lot of things I want to say. There's a lot of sets that I would like to say that would be spicy, that would be fun. I think you have compelling argument. I think you have an incredibly competing, compelling argument for heavy hitters. I think, I mean, just in terms of the nuance, the evolution of flesh and blood design, the, the limited format, what, the immediate impact in CC, the timing of it, I think you can make such an argument for heavy hitters. I think you can make an argument for Tales of Aria. I think the set is brilliant. I think the design is so flavorful. I think the way that the cards look is beautiful. And I think it brought a lot of players into the game. But neither of those are my answer. None of us are sitting here without Welcome to Wraith. This was a, was a product from a bunch of dudes in New Zealand. And dudes is a gender neutral term here. I don't, I don't know exactly the makeup of Legistore Studios in 2018 and 2019. But let me just say. None of us are here without Welcome to Wraith. They had to come into a crowded market. They had to come in before like every like all these huge names and they had to say, here is this thing. It's friggin' great. Trust us. And it worked. And we're all here five years later. So I don't know how it can be anything other than Welcome to Wraith. Yeah, I uh I think that's a great answer. Um <laughs> all of you are wrong. Uh, that is not the correct answer. None of you gave the correct answer, so I will be subtracting one point from all of you. Uh, so that's okay. 16. Okay, Arcane Rising. Lily said Arcane Rising. How is that 14, not your favorite set? And that's, there's a 14. Uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> the best <laughs> set is uh, Classic Crucible Battles. War? Classic Battles, Reinar versus Dorinthia. Okay, so <laughs> moving hey, on. I'll have a good one, Classic guys. Battles gonna... is the answer. Clearly, that is the best set. Back. It is a set. You know why? Because it had Glistening Steel Blade, and that is a card unique to that set. What about uh, the new Reinar spec that came out in that? Titanium yeah. Bobble. It had Titanium. 
Yeah. No. What about the no. Reinar? The, the new Reinar deck, deck had my, my Reinar deck had blue sink belows. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> that did. You know what? I will say. <laughs> you know, I will you die on this hill, play. everyone. That product was well built from a deck perspective because I could teach every concept in the game of Flesh and Blood through those two decks. I still think to this day, incredibly well built from a teaching design standpoint. Anyway, that. moving right along, <laughs> after that uh, lightning round literally destroyed my mic stand halfway through. Thank you all for doing a fantastic <laughs> job of giving hey, your you hottest takes. Really uh, yeah, anyway, moving right on to another thing that we're going to see at the Pro Tour. At the Pro Tour, we've got a an LL format event. In fact, Living Legend format is creeping back in in the Battle Hardened on Sunday. Now, this isn't something you usually get to see on coverage, but for the players that are looking to engage in this format, this is another opportunity to uh, jump in and splash some of those old school heroes like the Oldhams that we've talked about, like the Starvo that Sam mentioned earlier that we don't often talk about. Uh, the OG prism that exists, Briar is back. So my question for you is this, looking at the landscape of the LL format, maybe you haven't done it in a while, but if you had to think at this exact moment that you're going to build a deck and take it to play in that tournament, what deck do you bring Breezy, you wrote the article on it, so I'm definitely <laughs> going to start with you. When you write an LSS article about a format, it has to you have to be the one that kick it off. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, yeah, it's not been on everyone's mind. No, it was on recently. <clears throat> Dude, the deck that I would play, knowing all that's been changed and knowing like how Starvo and even old him by proxy has taken the ding. Um, I would Honestly, I'm taking Viscerite. I'm taking Viscerite with Sonata Galaxia. And that's not just because I'm biased. I think that card busts open Skeleta, which is already, it was already a viable plan. And I think, you know, you've got, you, you've got a think of the plan, and I haven't messed with it much, but I think there's a side plan where you can go full aggro, like not worry too much about the Sonata rune stack. And then also you can pivot in, oh, this is this matchup, I'm going to rune stack here and just blow you up, like turn five with 60 damage. So you're saying you're uh, playing so Kano is essentially what I'm you're playing, saying. I'm playing, yeah, but hey, guess where both of those heroes came from? Anyway. The best set? Uh, yeah. I'm question mark? The best, the, the best set ever. Uh, yeah, so I, I, without a question. And again, I think there's something to be said about some specialists that are able to perform very well in this format. You come from... A playing the hero pre ll you 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 it's like riding a bike like if i was a pre a, a prism og player jumping right back into this it'd be like whatever was there a thumb on my face good job <laughs> good job that? we're we're uh, supporting job. your answer uh, i think uh, okay. dylan's actually giving you points so that every time he does that i need to add a point to it he's gaming <laughs> himself but that's a pretty solid okay continue continue yeah. Crap, jeez. I'm trying to fix my <laughs> mic stand. What are you stopping? I don't know how. <laughs> oh, okay. Sam did it that time. Okay, well, oh, let me get a couple. Let me get a couple. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Viscerai without a hands down. And I was just saying, if you're a specialist player, don't be shy to play the hero. I mean, and not to say you have to play a living legend uh, hero. I think my second pick, if I was more equipped to do it, it'd be Fi. I think Fi is r ridiculous. And there he's not go. even hit. He's not even LL hero. <laughs> That's that's true. He's not. Um, Sam, what is your take? What would you uh, run out there? I, I like Darren Ying, by the way, in the in the chat saying that heavy hitters is clearly the best. Shout out to you. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Man. I, I wonder why I think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so when I say the hero, the he who must not be named and you go like, ugh, roll your eyes, take points away. Let me tell you why I will be taking ye who must not be named. What did we lose? What? It, what did we lose? What did we lose from uh, from 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 Starboard, Right, we lost some big attacks with some huge on hits that are Come that are really game. hard. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. We 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 lost some big stuff, right? But what uh, what what just came out? A guardian set, right? What is in that guardian set? Some cards that care about if their power is greater than their base. I'm looking at concuss. I'm looking at command respect. If this power is greater than its base, discard a card destroy a card in your arsenal what 
gives power greater than its base. Bravo's hero ability that also gives it dominate. So yeah, we lost freaking, I don't did we, I think we lost Starstruck. <laughs> we lost some stuff, but we gained stuff as well at the end of the day. So I feel like you can't not pick Bravo star of the show until we see a top eight that isn't literally eight Starvo. And they, not, they literally, they got toys. We lost some cards, but we got toys if we're Bravo players. So like, come on, man. And they only cost three. Come on, you can put that in your arsenal. Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Starvo oh, picking Starvo will continue until morale improves. Is yes. what Sam is on right here. That's that's his uh, pick. Dylan, uh, give us the hottest take. What are you taking? I had so much respect for Sam. Um. Anyway, no. <laughs> had my, mine would be belittle crouching tiger stubby hammer katsu. And how many points am I allowed to give you in one moment? Like, I'm can I just, right let's now, just slam I, that right okay, there. You want a joke? So Icelander's a nightmare. Well, let's throw that out of the way. Like I'm not stupid, but I have played that deck for fun against some buddies online. And I've turned to OTK them like 10 times. That deck is actually stupid when it does what it's supposed to do. Um, yeah. Crouching tiger, belittle stubby hammer, Katsu. If, if if there is a major LL format, that will be the deck I will play, no matter who's in LL. Look at that. I see that is what I like. That is what I want to hear on yeah. this show. He just called his shot. Someone can clip that for the like six months from now LL tournament. And if he is not there at that, I will come back and posthumously remove points from this video <laughs> for him. Yeah, you will lose points. Uh, no, I I don't think I have that authority or that power. But I like that. Okay, if I had to take a deck into the LL format. Um, I would, man, that's a hard one for me to answer. I, I did not give this any thought myself, uh, being the person that hosts it, but it, I kind of want to play along cause this is, this is a fun topic. I never got to sit down and play out any, um, Bravo star of the show, like tournaments. I never, I never did that myself. I never got to sit down and play any Starvo tournaments, uh, which was a little sad for me. Uh, at the same time, it was, it was kind of exciting because he went so fast so maybe I would sit down and play Starfo just to uh just to you know triple fuse and um, watch my opponent roll their eyes in frustration. Come on, you know. So we pick the same deck. I feel like that should be a point, right? Like all right, far right, right, you convince. Yeah, okay, on, all right, yeah. okay, all right, okay. Oh, there we go. All right, okay. No, there's no wrong answer here. I think uh, there's a lot. Yeah. Actually, there is Prism. Prism's the wrong answer. Anyone that plays yeah, Prism, that's, Prism. that's trash. Play. Get that. No, don't I'm just kidding. Prism. People that like Prism in chat, which is just about everybody, because everybody likes Prism. Uh, are totally. all about to grab their pitchforks. Okay, so let me ask you this. We just talked about what you would bring. What do you think about the Living Legend format? Is this something that you want to see more of? Is this something that you feel like players at these events want to play in more of? Do you see this format growing, staying the same, or decreasing in popularity? Oh look! I I knew I'd trigger Vishra. There he is. I knew it. I knew it. He beat me on. Uh, he beat me on uh, uh, Prism a couple of days ago, and uh, I, I knew what? if he was floating yeah, around in what? there, we might get him in there. Okay. So my question: What do you think this format is going to be doing in the future? And do you think this is something that more people want to jump in on? Uh, start us off, Dylan. It's very complicated. Like the obvious, like caveat, not caveat, but the, I don't know what the word would be. The obvious thing with unknown information is like what's LSS's standpoint on where they want it to be, right? In the coming, but not knowing that, there's two things I think they need to do to make the format, or three things they need to do to make the format better. One, more significant tournaments and prizing. They're starting to do that, right? But there needs to be a calling level LL format, there, or LL event. There has to be, and it has to be marketed. Shouldn't be a side event, make it a main one or battle harden. At least make it a battle harden. I mean, we have Blitz battle hardens, but we don't have Living Legend battle hardens. Um, well, this one is a battle harden, so. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's a side. Is it a main event? Like that's why people are going to play it. It's okay. not a side event to a main event. I mean, like it is uh -uh. its own thing. Yeah. Um, the second thing I think also is like, I don't know how you do this. I don't have the solution to this. It's just the core concept: is make it a weekly local event. Like, let stores run armory, like official armories that are living legend once a month or something like that. And I think it has to start at a store level. Now, that that's very hard, right? Because new players, it's like, okay, do you buy a deck just for living legend? Like, that's not exactly, like, feasible all the time. However, I think it's got to start somewhere, especially maybe in the bigger cities where Flesh and Blood's like, more prominent, is, like, just do armory level living legend night. 
I think that will help a lot as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I think it's going to stay the same though. To answer your question, I don't see it changing, which I originally thought it was. I thought this year we'd see a lot more, and maybe we will the second half of the year. But right now, it just seems like it's kind of staying the way it is. It's not really changing a whole lot. But I, mean, I hope I'm wrong because I want to play that. It's like fun. It's like, in my opinion, it's what I'm going to say. The game that asked me name, Magic's Commander, right? It, to me, I know we have UPF, but like that. I could see Living Legend being like our premier fun format where people go on, buy these crazy decks, get alt arts, get like all this fun stuff and bling it out and then play it like semi for fun, but also can play it competitively, right? Hmm. It's the one format that I could see be played at a casual level very, very prominently and also at a highly competitive level very, very prominently, which is it can't be said even for most of the other formats, to be honest. Breezy, what's your take? Yeah, man, I th- feel like we were revisiting this topic from a, f- a month or so ago because we spoke about it a little bit then. And uh, yeah, to Dylan's point, I, I think I would have like hoped to see it change a little bit more. But the fact that we have seen any change, because initially James White, LSS devs have said, you know, this 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 format is supposed to be the most explosive that flesh and blood ca- has to offer. We don't want to ban anything. We don't want to tweak anything. We don't want to fine tune anything. It is the wild west of flesh and blood if you love it play it we don't care just do it and so now that they've made some tweaks it's because they saw eight starvos in the top eight which is Price. even they they cannot deny that so that is their quality or their their damage control to ensure that this format is, has like a lifespan of enjoyability so it's a baby step it's not a, i don't to be honest i picked i i said i would play viscerai would I win? No. It would be top. It would be Starbos again. That's just what's going to happen. So until that's not a thing, I think the Living Legend could be at risk of being like, I don't want to play that. It has this perception of just if you don't play X deck, a.k.a. Starvo, then you yep. will not win. Hmm. And until and it sucks because I don't want that to be true. Like I literally just spent like weeks like preparing and writing an article about this format, that's, which I love, which I absolutely love. Because my favorite hero is the most powerful in that format. I could do whatever I want in that format with this hero. But it's unfortunate because if I'm a new player, I, I spend X amount of money on a deck. I get to play that deck for six months to a year, and then it hits LL. That deck doesn't do me anything as long as it's not Starvo in the Living Legend format if I want to win. So yes, let's say Dylan's dream comes true. We get a battle. We get a calling Living Legend format and it's living it's just starvo and then unless you're playing for funsies and you just want to see what this how far you can take prism like it's gonna be it's gonna be uh starvo again and i truly think it's just crown of seeds i think crown of seeds is the problem anyway Hmm. sam what's your take do you think this format's on the up you think it's going down you think uh it's gonna be something that players want to jump into I think this format for the foreseeable future is kind of exactly where it's going to be, personally. I think while there are these kind of prohibitive decks that are so powerful that, yes, you can play anything, but again, we talk about quite literally Fab 1.0 versus Fab 2.0, right? So there is such a stark design change that has happened that, yeah, you're going to have decks that Living Legend, oh, well, I can still play them in Living Legend. What's this? What does it do? Plus two, (laughs) dominate, and go again, right? So like... There, there, there's always going to be an inherent split within the formats just insofar as the difference in design philosophy. I think the thing that we'll have to kind of wait and see that nobody really knows yet is how much does Flesh and Blood remain truly like non-rotating as a game because there has been a significant uptick in Living Legend points allocated as well as in Living Legend points given out. You look at an open meta like this, right? So if decks are churning through and it really feels more like, you know, a standard in other games and every two years it's like a completely different meta game, then I think the Living Legend format has a very different kind of role to fill. But right now in Classic Constructed, you can play against so many different heroes, so many different things are viable. If you start to muddy the waters of that with like, oh, but you should also care as much about Living Legend, it, it asks, I think, a lot of, of a player, of just like a standard player. I think if you're really asking them to consider two formats with all these different heroes and one of them has prohibitively stronger decks than the other, but these decks that are coming out are at a kind of a different power level than the decks. And this, like, I know that that works in other games. You look at Modern and Standard and Magic, you know, for sure, but th- th- it's, that's different. You know, this is still considered non-rotating, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's just asking a little much of players to increase the Living Legend formats 
like comp- not competitive viability, but like uh, uh, visibility and awareness and a huge amount of events, right? I think you have to keep in mind that players are right now being asked to keep track of like 25 feels like CC heroes, right? So True. if you're also want- wanting them to c- compete at the highest level in all these tournaments and they also have to think about all the heroes that LL'd, I think that might be asking a bit much of them as it stands right now. How much will Dex rotate in and out of the format in the future? We have to wait and see. Well, you see, and that is why, in my opinion... This is one of those good topics to uh, bring back up and and to talk back about because we're in a spot where there is a very open meta and players are possibly engaging in, you know, so many, like 25 heroes. And perhaps that number balloons with the part the miss fail to something like 30 heroes, depending on if, uh, you know, a couple heroes LL along the way. But that is a large percentage of play or, or a large percentage of players time, I should say, devoted to thinking about and playing and engaging in that meta. But the question remains, if the game starts to rotate at a quicker pace and those players are totally married to that hero, the Dromais, the Prisms, uh, maybe even the Starvos, if you're married to that hero and you want to engage with that hero and you no longer have the capacity to do that in Classic Constructed, then players are almost required now in order to do that, to still engage in this eternal format in the Living Legend system and the format therein. And so it's a really important balancing point, I think, from an LSS perspective on how fast these years are going to rotate and then how much we actually put, um, you know, a lot of our either R&D or even just like uh, event features on the Living Legend format. And I really like, um, and I, I'm going to give him an extra point for it. I really like what uh, Dylan mentioned about are we going to start having players sort of build and buy their own decks for that format if they're just getting into the game, if that is where the game is heading? And it leads us into our last topic, really, and that is the pre-con decks that are coming out very soon in quarter number two. Now, these were announced not too long ago at uh, Gamma, which is the Game Manufacturers Association convention, and uh, the Armory decks is what they're uh, called on the uh, production here. Uh, are basically like pre-constructed, classic constructed decks, which did exist back in WTR. So if you are new to the game or if you're just jumping in within the past year, these products existed for set one and set one only. There were four hero decks is what they were called. They were called hero decks and there were 60 card pre-constructed, classic constructed decks. Now these are um, supposed to be designed for armory play to be competitive at armory levels, which is your base sort of weekly level. And the question that i have to you know sort of set the stage knowing that we're going to have this product coming out uh knowing that we're going to have a big release in japan for the game with part the mist veil what hero do you think now it's already in the can so we don't know we're just spitballing here giving our takes what hero do you think should be the first hero in the pre-constructed series of decks off the presses what do you think they should run out there for you know, new players in Japan or new players here in the States or uh, in the APAC region at large, in Europe, in Brazil, where do you think they should go first? Breezy, you get to kick us off this time, sir. Oh, dude, I'm so torn between two heroes right now. Um, because arguably, if you're going to do something like this and you want it to be, hey, what's this game, Flesh and Blood? Okay, Armory decks, I can just jump in for $40 and play at my Armory. That hero better not have 500 plus living legend points. So I have to look mm-hmm. at anyone below that. So I'm starting to think either Arachne or Yuzuri. I think that with Brian Gottlieb behind a product like this, you know Assassin is going to be a part of it, baby. So I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say Arachne. I'm going to say that Arachne, it coincides so well with the reveal in Japan. Um, he doesn't have a lot of living legend points. It's a safe buy for a new player. It's got tons of flavor, tons of enjoyable bl- strategy and skill advantage if you want to become a specialist at that hero i think that's a great first start a first hero to pick as the cc armory deck i like it sam you get to take it next what is your thought here i have a i have a bunch of them i have a bunch of them so you'll you'll you like i think you brought up some great points parker it's it's something that you know you want to have relate i, I think the thing sub 500 living legend points that makes a lot of sense to me right i think the other thing that makes a lot of sense to me is you want to teach the fundamentals of fab right you want it you want people to feel okay i need to keep this card to pitch this card to attack with i can block with this card you want them to really start to learn the fundamentals of that class you also want and i have to imagine recent releases to support the deck 
that this armory deck is, right? Because they have the most chance of being in stores, right? So I don't think with Bright Lights, I can look at, at Mechanologist because it's truly an all Mechanologist set. You know, three pack crack is basically an armory deck. <laughs> you know? Like yeah, you yeah, can yeah, just yeah. put that shit together and, and get a CC <laughs> deck. But so, so I'm looking at classes probably, probably from heavy hitters, right? And I, I don't think we're going to necessarily see Guardian or Brute, but I also don't think Warrior because, you know, the go again has to go on your weapon. I know from teaching with the classic battles, that's not always intuitive that your weapon has to have go. You know, that's not always intuitive. So is there a Warrior that plays with both weapons and attack actions with a set that came out pretty recently and does his last name, or last does it, Breaker, Bolton? <laughs> okay what okay. do we think about bolton because not only do you have to really think here's my card i pitch here's my card i attack with oh i would have to charge with this card so if i don't charge is my turn as good right not only that the majestics that go in a bolton deck probably aren't gonna break the market if you reprint them people probably aren't gonna get pissed if you reprint a bunch of bolton majestics similarly if you look at the legendaries that bolton needs probably not gonna break the bank to get you a bunch of bolton legendaries right so i have to you know i could see perhaps a worry of the of the charging being too much an extra step that other other decks don't have to worry about but i think the like you I think you learn so much from playing Bolton. I think it's such a great deck that teaches the fundamentals. Heavy Hitters just came out, gives a lot of support to Bolton. Dusk Till Dawn just came out, which gives a lot of light cards. That's probably, hopefully, still going to be in your LGS. And you know there's a shitload of Monarchs sitting around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to throw down with Bolton. I like it. I like it. All right. Finish this off, uh, Dylan. What are your uh, takes on this one? Gosh, I thought one of y'all was gonna take it. I'm so surprised. It's a Dold Ira. That's that's what it's gonna be. Oh, I was gonna say that. Oh, two points, that two points. That's such like, a good, funny so, answer. So in all seriousness, like to Sam's point, the fundamentals of Flesh and Blood. It's literally Ira. Like that's block, you know, value, math. Like there is no hero in the game, in my opinion, that is more quiz essential than Ira on that. The second thing is they said it has to be armory level competitive, right? So there's certain heroes in the game that really need their majestics, right? Like Reinar without Bloodrush Bellow is awful. Um, it literally just feels like it's like not, it's a shell of itself, right? There's certain heroes that need their majestics to do well. Ira doesn't need majestic, like crazy, like hard print majestics to do well. You can just have really good combo based attacks. They ain't have to be combo, but just good, like stuff that is normally on rate, like a leg tap, but now it's a one for five, right? And so you can print things in that set that make it, or the, in that hero that make it armory competitive mm. without having these crazy high price majestics that people are going to go after, in my opinion. And it's, it, you want to talk about marketing, like the easiest way to re-excite people is the inaugural hero in Flesh and Blood is now the first CC pre-con. Um, I think it's just an easy way to introduce Ira into CC. Maybe you give her a different ab ability. I don't think you need to. Um, I think she'd be just okay competitive with her current ability, and I think that she is one of the easiest heroes to not have like a high price majestic, which is everybody's worry. Uh, that but it'd still be armory competitive. I think that is such a good answer for all of the reasons that you said, and it was something that I would not have thought of. As I was just thinking of like them reprinting a hero that already exists, but to sit down and to print the first hero ever in a new form you could even print it that way you're also targeting people that i mean it's a it's a very easy trope to fall into of, of you know hey look that's a ninja i see a ninja right there what i wonder what that is i wonder what that game is i'm gonna go pick that up and take a look at that it's a it's a pre-constructed deck i can just buy this and play it uh at, at this event like that's something that's easy to grab onto um it, it fits nicely with uh, the tie-in that we could possibly be seeing and the support that could possibly come from Part the Mist Veil, that's a, a really solid slam dunk type of answer. And this is a product that I'm incredibly excited about. I, I am very excited to see how they've uh, kind of put these together, how they're going to go about um, sort of printing these, what Majestics are going to be in there, how are they going to uh, make it uh, armory viable, as they put it. Uh, this is something that I am very keen to see them roll out, uh, and it's going to be happening Q2 this year, so that's coming up rapidly. Yeah. Q2 is, and, is rapidly uh, approaching. And this isn't point space, but this is, I saw other people say this on Twitter, this is also a perfect way for them to reintroduce heroes into the game without having to tie it to a set. Right. Like if they want to bring Briar back, they can bring her back with a different ability with a fully set pre-con 
yep. and they don't have to go to Aria, right? So they're not. This is a way for them to have complete freedom on where they go with their sets because they can just. It's like almost like a giant expansion slot. They mm-hmm. can bring old time back, right? So, um, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, agree. I, have a, I have a take as well that doesn't have to be for points either, but. I like the Irish. They don't thing, want points, right? Sam. They don't want points at all. I know. I did. No, I said I mean, that earlier too. One of my first things when I jumped in, I was like, I, I don't need points here. I just want to say this. Yeah, I like yeah, we're, yeah. we're all being respectful. I like that. You can give me points if you want, Stephen. But you know, oh, I'm just you, saying. Oh, you <laughs> rat bass. No I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so to your point, uh, Dylan, yeah, is like Iris seems like the best fit. But to my knowledge, she's like thousand years old. And how do you <laughs> play as a thousand year old character unless you have Ooh. someone who can bring her back from the dead? So maybe, just maybe, we Give see a necromancer. Our necromancer, necromancer confirmed. Uh, necromancer confirmed. Is that what you're saying? I mean, screw yeah. it. Let's just say it's Kano, you guys. It's probably right. going to be Kano at this Kano. point. Yeah, problem solved. Easy, right? <laughs> e- armory competitive, easy to learn, easy to pick up. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Thank there. You. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> just, very much. Just set you up. That's the play right there. You <laughs> know your audience. You know what? I, okay. So the follow up question to these pre contexts, which again I said I'm very excited about. What do you think other products should look like that kind of echo this? Because what was said at the uh, sort of presentation was that they're looking to release a different type of product once per month for like 11 out of 12 months out of the year. Now, that is not going to be. And so everyone at home, hear this. That's not going to be 11 sets. Okay, that's not like your your bank account is going to like revolt it is 11 products, and those products could be things you engage with and could be things you could not engage with. But if we're looking at this as not just a pre-con and set kind of release once every month for you know almost the entirety of the year, what type of product do you see that could be really interesting or really exciting that you would like to uh, engage more in uh, with regards to uh, their releases this year? TCG Talk, finish us out. Give me a supplementary like set that is UPF, completely UPF focused. Um, like I want a draftable set that is designed around the UPF format. There's other games that are he must they must not be named where their best freaking thing is Commander, right? So like I I feel like we need to capitalize on that more. Like there's two the two like it's not negative, it's just facts is facts. The two biggest drawbacks of flesh and blood right now are cost and barrier to entry, like to get to a point where you feel like you can play and not get your butt kicked every week. UPF is one of the best ways, I think, if they could do like monthly UPF stuff at, at, at uh, stores to help get people in the game. And a good way to do that is have like a mini set release, right? Where it's maybe it's maybe it's even like a CCG style where like it's a certain amount of cards, it's UPF focused, similar to the TCC kit, but it's an actual box. And you can get different heroes and stuff like that. I think. That would be a really cool. If I'm trying to think of cool sealed products that we haven't seen yet, that would be my first. That's where my head went first, at least, is a mm. UPF focused mini set. Okay. Breezy, what do you think? Yeah, mine's kind of like a hybrid of that, but not necessarily. So I want uh, uh, every TCG needs a, a jump off point. And they've tried so many different ways, whether it be around the table or just the pre-constructed blitz decks and even all the way to these armory decks those 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 fit different needs for different people and so what we need is like the battle academy equivalent that pokemon does that literally comes with like the step-by-step open this box it comes with two decks and if you love those decks they're still viable still legal if you want you could take them to your armor blitz night or whatever but something that's literally nothing more not made for anything more than your kitchen table to just say I want to poke at this and see what it is. It can mm. operate as a board game if you want it to. And so for that instance, it doesn't have to be... Legend Story Studios is focused so much on the, the the competitive nature of the game, which is what sells your product long term. And I feel like it's on a great trajectory. But if it's not being piggybacked by an introductory product like that, like I said, like it's maybe a $15 to $20 little box that literally says, here's how you play the game. And it's got a play mat that says step one, step two. It's literally their Ira instructional video in a box with different heroes, preferably. Uh, so yeah, I think that's what the game needs. And that's how they're going to literally like uh, grow the future of their competitive players. Not everyone wants to get in at the competitive level. They just want to poke it and say, do and i think that's how you cultivate the future of flesh and blood so i, I like that well at the kitchen table make an ira um 
interactive, but uh, in paper. I like the way that yeah. you described that. I, that's mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can see that. Sam, what do you think? Well, I have some responses. Firstly, uh, I, what I've what I've noticed from from my fellow panelists here is we is talking a lot about good products to onboard new players, which I think is absolutely important and things to and and things to consider for these kind of supplemental releases. Um, my Okay, I don't want to say problem with UPF. I don't. I ain't got. I ain't got no problem. Hey, mine isn't UPF. I know. No, no, I got. Hey, I got some over YouTube. Okay. okay. Um, okay, okay. This household no. stands UPF. You no, better no, no, be no, careful. No, no. I ain't got no problem with UPF. <laughs> I ain't got no. I actually played the round table set. I think the round table set's freaking awesome. That was so much fun. There is an undeniable parallel that will always be drawn to Commander. Nice. You can't run Safe. from it. Nice. Yep. You, you, you can't. You can't run from it, right? That's true. So, That's like true. the the way. To differentiate ourselves in the in the casual space will be the fabled all important PV. That that's what we'll do. That hundred percent. That that's what we'll do. That I really like what you're talking about, Parker. In terms of like you know, the, I was gonna say you know one of the things I was kicking around were like the dual decks, right? Imagine classic battles, but mm. like super sick, like CC <laughs> variable, <laughs> like yeah, like variable loadouts. You know, like like stories of like true battles between them, and and they you know you see the Brave Forge bracers in the art. They talk about the history of it. You have a Brave, you know, like that would be sick. There's there's ways to do that, but the question was, what are the things that that you want to see, right? That we want to see, and 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 that's you know I think those are important things for onboarding new players. But what do I want to see? I want to see a freaking badass reprint set that's draftable, that's like has good staple cards. Do you know how many hmm. people would love to draft a curated? you know, like important cards in flesh and blood set, good reprints for Majestics, maybe even good legendary reprints. I don't know, you know, their reprint policy is incredibly player friendly, which I know it's, it's collector friendly, I should say, but while also being player friendly in the way that they don't reprint things at the certain rarity. So I don't know how that would work. But what I do know is players would go bananas for draftable sets once a year, once every other year that are not only reprint focused, but are designed to give you just like this incredibly cool and different limited format. Yeah, much like a master set, something mm -hmm. we've seen in other games that I just don't think flesh and blood would do in the same, like they, the monetary angle wouldn't be the same. I just have to imagine the way that they're they're so consumer friendly mm. and consumer focused at Legend Story Studios. They are all TCG players, and you see that in so many of their business decisions, right? So it wouldn't be this this incredibly important, uh, you know, uh, expensive thing with that just for you know getting the cards to jump up in price. Seven different showcase treatments. This would be for the players, and it would be so sick. And I think people would love it. Shout out to Matt in the chat. I want more lore books, books or whatever would be great. This totally. is something that I feel like not enough, uh, you know, people in the space and the community are acknowledging as a possibility. When they say 11 product releases, they're like, okay, so that's all cards and that's all things that I have to buy and there's going to be a staple in every one of them, so I'm going to have to chase the staple. It doesn't have to be. It could literally be something like, here's a lore book. Here is a, like, uh, you know, a graphic novel. Now, I'm not saying that they are going to do that. I'm not saying that they want to do that. I'm just saying the capacity is there for that type of product to be something that players or just collectors or the casual fan of the lore and all of the fantastic work that the creatives team does can engage in. And that is a huge possibility. Now, I have to answer this because none of you said my answer. And I was, I was half expecting someone to kind of get there. But here's the thing. I think it would be a fantastic play, and I've seen other games do this and try this and sometimes succeed and sometimes they built the product wrong, but I think this is a real thing, especially for Flesh and Blood, being a fighting game in paper form. Give us the downloadable content. Give us the $10, here's 20 cards, and a new hero in a new class. Here's all the cards, just in, in like a, a class form. Here's, uh, you know, like, just take this hero. It does this one specific thing. You can build casually at the kitchen table with this brand new class. Here's a hero that functions with it. It's 10 bucks. It's like 30 cards. You walk out the door. You don't have anything else attached to it. It's literally just uh, a piece of cardboard, one of those plastic bumpers to hold the cards in place, the hero, and then put on the top, write, Pirate, and we're done. Problem solved. Because that's how you get pirates into the flesh and blood. Because we that's that's oh, what God. it will take. And I'm oh, telling man. you right now, it would be so simple, and it would be so easy. Because what yeah. you're doing is you're allowing yourself 
to just play around on the edges, on the periphery of the design space. To just create, here's a young hero. Uh, it can be played in Blitz. Here's, uh, you know, 30 cards that are all class-based for that one specific uh, class that's brand new. And then problem solved. You just go and try. Now, of course, you can test it and you can be like, yeah, this is cool. This is, you know, this is legal and functional in, in the format and whatever in Blitz. Uh, but you could also just not. And you could say, you know, just go play this at the kitchen table. And um, if, if this is a problem, then we'll just do some stuff with this. But it's designed for, like, just playing around with. At the, at the sides, at the edges, at the squeaky side spaces of the game. And I personally would love to see uh, that product. Like, I would buy every single one of them. I don't even care if it's not pirately related. I just think it's super yes, cool. Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 I do. I do yes, definitely care if it's pirate yeah, related. We, <laughs> we really missed that. I don't believe that for a second. All of you could have, any of you could have said out. pirates, I would have given yeah. you 10 points. I wrote it on the pirates, sticky pirates. note. I wrote pirates. it on the sticky yes. note. 10 points if anyone says anything related to pirates. We totally you had your chance. But you know what? At the end of it all, a, a long, hard-fought battle between all of you. But look at this. Sam O'Byrne comes out on pirates. top at the vi Well, okay, changing. I did I did oh. second I said second guy. Second guy. <laughs> Congratulations, Sam. Hey, this was a really fun back and forth episode with a lot of fun hot takes. But Sam brought the fire. He was practicing for this. For those of you who don't know, a peek behind the curtain. Yeah. He was doing like like burpees before and being like Bolton, Bolton. Bolton, like he was, he was ready. So I, it's it's awesome that the hard work paid off. Sam O, congratulations, man! Wow, well, huge claps. You. Just thank you for having me. I guess this yeah. means we have to run it back. Huh? I guess this means gotta run it back, defend the title once yep. one more and later in the in the world. So Nothing. we'll roll yeah. scabs, and Please. one of the two yeah. of you on the bottom will be uh, voted off, and then Sam's okay. gonna take That's your point. We'll bring it. Oh, oh, is that what he said? Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood yeah. that. My fault. The oh, Whoa. Oh, Whoa. that's actually a great idea. Deathmatch. Whoever wins <laughs> survives to the yeah, they, just, a... they just start at minus five points next time. Oh that's my yeah. god. There you <laughs> go. That's <laughs> right. They get they get a negative. So I think as... if the armory deck, if the armory deck is one of the heroes that we said, we should get a buff next time we play. Ooh, that's okay, a good yeah, idea yeah, too. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that. Sure. I like that as yeah. well. I like that as well. Uh, Sam, <laughs> as is customary here, you win absolutely nothing for being in first place, but you also get to, uh, you know, have the final word of, uh, you know, celebration or however you want to take it. Give it, uh, mm. give us your uh, your best take here to, to round us out. Well, I would just like to firstly salute the three of you. I, as, as, as a fellow person who likes to make videos and write words about the game, you are three of my favorites, and I just think all that you do are all so very cool, and I'm, I'm a big fan. I want to reiterate that for everybody out there and just say I'm so excited for the PT, and I hope everybody enjoys watching and, and following along at home, and I'm so excited. Let's have a freaking badass show. That's going to be pretty good. Yes, it's going to be pretty good. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. I have, uh, I think, if I did this correctly, I have a secret sixth topic that if the chat wants us to go to, we can go to it. But in order to do it, they're going to have to type pirate in the chat within the next 30 seconds. If no one types pirate in the chat <laughs> within 30 seconds, I will go to the stream ending screen and we will all, oh crap, TCG talk is just, just cheating. That is 100% <laughs> cheating. Neither of you are allowed to do, you're both disallowed from, if someone else types pirate in the chat, we could talk about that secondary topic. I don't even remember what the topic is. I would just hit the button and uh, we would talk about it. All right, Vishra okay. said it. Okay, what is the, what is it? I forgot what it was. Oh God, oh, this is so good. Okay, uh, go around the table. All right, bonus topic time. Points are off the board. You get to fire and forget. Oh, I can say what I want. There, yeah, you get to say exactly what you want. Here we go. Okay, the most hated, most hero. hated For you? hero. You can take it however you want, Samuel O'Byrne. However you choose, whatever you okay. think. The most hated hero in flesh and blood. Because we've had a lot of discourse, let's be honest. Look, we've had a lot of discourse in the uh, in the old in the old community over the past month or so. So now you get to fire off your uh, hottest take. This is not for points. If you're sticking around to watch this, uh, then congratulations, you found the secret show. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Uh, I don't know who wants to go first. I mean, I'll take it because it's it. easy. Do oh, it. Oh well, Sam. no, okay. please. I, I defer. Uh, um. Arclight Sentinel. Is that a hero? <laughs> no, yeah, it, it can be. It can be. It is now. It, it basically is. That's the only thing that Prism has going for it. It's Prism, dude. I hate Prism.
I don't care who hears me say it. I'll tell I'll tell Fano Black, I'll tell <laughs> Vishra, I'll tell anybody that hero su- uh, no, it doesn't suck. That hero's just it's so like because it's James White James White's favorite like hero, it was like his his beauty, his passion. He sculpted it in the it, careful in the in the shape of <laughs> all that he loves. <laughs> and it just I feel like it's become unfavored. It's or it's become favored unfairly. <laughs> Here, I'll just no, I got you. Yeah, just keep going, just keep going. And and because of that, it's put it's put such a mental and physical and emotional strain on the community. And I just don't think that as if Prism's a Around for much longer, no one else is going to be here. I'm going on a complete fake rant right oh now. Oh my god, <laughs> that was completely fake. <laughs> that was uh, that was powerful. Okay, you should have done that earlier. Fake. That's points right there. There we go. Did you just write about the living legend? For yeah, that? come yeah, on, man. Awkward. Like, geez, slow yeah, down I, a little I, bit. All right, the Dylan. Thing is, it's is you- like. If they didn't even, they made her, they gave her Luminaris again, dude. <laughs> they kind of did in a lot of They, they kind of did. They kind of did. They did it again. <laughs> All right, Dylan, what is your take? Kano's not even the top three. It's Prism, Starvo, and Oldheim. All were way worse Um, in, in terms of how much they were hated and, and play. Like, for me, number one is Oldheim. It's not even close. Like, at the top level, I know, mm-hmm. like, some players really loved him. A lot of, like, the top, top players. At a normal like semi competitive level and I'm being generous here <laughs> sitting there waiting for an old time player for two and a half minutes just to say the word crown I literally wanted to like throw his cards across the room so like every single time like I'd play leg tap for four and I could have went and got a drink before they said the <laughs> word crown so like yeah old time to me was the most hated <laughs> hero from like that my level in my opinion Kano's not even top three. I can appreciate that. I just put Kano on here because uh, I'll be honest with you, he's I was lazy story. and he was he's my placeholder for cards. So <laughs> straight. <laughs> That's actually why I put him on here. Nice. But you know what? That's you great. could say that, and I would not take points away from you right now. Always Sam, this is your moment. Um those are I mean, I think I think the two answers that have been said are probably the correct answers. I think the thing I've seen the most of there are a couple people online that are like like vociferous i don't even know if that's how that word is supposed to be used in in the now. hate for prism yeah so i understand the hate for prism i i have to throw my weight behind the grandfather of eternity i i have to do it i mean i think for a similar reason just the the play pad it was like the ultimate you have to be able to beat me or sucks to suck homie like you're just gonna lose unless you have a completely sculpted game plan and i think from the semi-competitive le- competitive level down that just didn't really exist for a lot of players so these old Tim decks were such a bummer to watch stomp these poor folks. And from the coverage perspective, my first real job was calling was Indy a year idea. ago, dude. And it was it, that was the old him calling. Calling Indy mm-hmm. a year ago was the old him calling. And it's me and Pongage up there trying to make the same thing exciting the eighth game in a row now see if he blocks oh he's gonna block he blocked everybody he blocked the card (laughs) and it's uh and i and i would even hazard to say and again a lot of top players love to play ultimate very good very exciting and it's really rare that you find someone playing it playing this game that is not like oh man that person was so nice that's a really rare thing to have happen but the couple times i've seen it happen you know what deck they were playing ultimate they were playing ultimate (laughs) that's all i'm gonna say yeah, See, I, I'd, I, I'd rather kiss Oldham's feet than play against a prism again. I played Katsu. I had zero issues. With prism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oldham, Oldham maybe, is the maybe, right it was answer. A skill, it, was a, it was a skill <laughs> issue for sure. I think that uh, there's an objectively right answer, and it is the old man. I don't know. Tell me in chat if we're wrong, if we're way off base. Look, Starvo was a design like mistake. Star- he shouldn't have existed. Yeah. He ruined a standard Star- format. Had a lot of negativity. Yeah, but also people but it was love too playing short. Starvo it was for the opposite short. reason. Like they is like smoking people. Yeah. So it was it was hated from the people who were losing, but it was absolutely adored by the people who played the hero. And old time, most of the top players that played him were like they played him because he was just Too like good. good. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't yeah. that he the like deck. they yeah. uberly enjoyed it. It just made yeah. sense to play it. In my opinion, the most hated deck is not necessarily the best deck. It's the one that it evokes the most visceral reaction from you. And yeah. there are very Oldham, few yeah. heroes that do it more effectively than Oldham because you are forced to watch a train wreck for 65 minutes 
because you know that deck is freaking going to time. Yeah. Because it takes two and a half minutes to say crown. They do. And they'll be like, sorry, like they won't concede. Oh, yeah. Come on. I can't believe. I can't believe this Kano deck is making me. I can't believe this is ridiculous. They always take so long on their turns. This. All minute game. Crown. Oh, no. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on. (laughs) Come on, people. Come on. Okay, so, all right. I'm glad we got that all out of the way. Uh, Thank you for uh, showing up to topic number six, a.k.a. the therapy session. Uh, And with that, everybody, I think it's time for us to wait. Bye. It's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for showing up, for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, do the thing that YouTubers tell you to do with the like button, the subscribe thing. Let us know if you want this in podcast form, and then I will um, like your comments. I'll give it a little heart, and then I will proceed to not do that because I don't have enough time on my hands. Goodbye now. Bye-bye.